Hello, my lovely anatomists and physiologists. Let's take a little bit of time to talk about smooth muscle. Now, smooth muscle, I like to say, is the muscle of your organs, your viscera, or your guts, which really applies well in the case of the digestive system, because traditionally guts really mean small and large intestine. So we'll see smooth muscle as the muscle of your internal organs. And it was actually described for you back in your chapter 10. So if you're using the OpenStax book, you'll find reading about smooth muscle in section 10.8, which I'll link for you in your video description. Now, when we talk about our smooth muscle, let's pick out things that are a little bit different about this um, tissue. So I've got two diagrams pulled from the OpenStax textbook. And what I want us to start with is to see that our smooth muscle cells are shaped in a spindle shape. And what that means is they're gonna be tapered at the ends and like fat in the middle. And then we'll see they do have a single nucleus so they have one nucleus, but then the significant thing is that they are going to lack striations. Now they still have actin and they still have myosin, but it's going to be organized in different ways. So we're going to see the thick filament, which remember is mostly your myosin molecule, are going to be like scattered throughout the cell. So we're not organized in sarcomere units. That's what it means when we say lack striations. Your thin filament, which is remember mostly your actin, is going to be attached to what are called dense bodies. And we can see the dense bodies in our diagram. So let's highlight, we're seeing these little kind of circular dots and we see them you know, where adjacent cells are connecting, we see them throughout, and we see these intermediate filaments attaching the dense bodies to each other. So when we talk about the dense bodies, these are gonna be important because they connect adjacent, so neighboring cells to each other, meaning they're, allowing the smooth muscle to act like a sheet of connected cells rather than like these individual cells. We'll see also that the dense body is going to be part of a network of intermediate filaments. So this is giving like a completely different sort of organization to the smooth muscle than what we studied in both skeletal and cardiac muscles. And then we'll also see that the dense bodies are attached to the sarcolemma, which is our name for the cell membrane of these, in this case, smooth muscle cell. And what this means is when we get contraction between cross bridge formation between the actin and the myosin, because of this different arrangement, instead of getting a cell that shortens that contraction, we get a cell that does um, like a corkscrew sort of movement is how it's described or twist movement at contraction. So we're getting this completely different sort of movement. And what this is doing for us is providing some very slow, some very steady contractions in our smooth muscle. Also what this is doing for us is giving us what's described as plasticity. And so plasticity is important because we can um, contract at a wide range of cell length. Okay, when we, I'm gonna highlight plasticity. This is an important feature of smooth muscle. When we talked about skeletal muscle, we said there was like an optimal sarcomere length in order to achieve optimal tension. 
when we talked about cardiac muscle, we said the more you stretched it, the more force you could generate. Remember that rubber band? <laughs> in the case of the smooth muscle, uh, it doesn't care. You can have a lot of food in your stomach. It's, you know, at the end of like your feast, feast meal for whatever, you know, holiday celebration you do and your belly is full of food and you can still generate forceful contractions to do those segmentation and peristaltic movements. Or you can have like a very tiny amount of food because all you had available to eat that day was a peanut butter or jelly sandwich or pimento cheese sandwich or banana, you know, and, and you, you don't have a lot of food in your GI tract, you can still generate the contraction that you need. So regardless of whether your belly is like full, over full, or very empty, you're still able to do these contractions. We'll also see, we'll also see in our smooth muscle that we will have some pace setter cells. So we'll talk about our smooth muscle cells as being controlled by the nervous system, being controlled by the endocrine system, but we do have some cells that will spontaneously depolarize and we can see signals being transmitted between cells so that we can see the cells kind of maintaining a good muscle tone and doing some of that contraction together. The other thing to pick out, we mentioned varicosities when we were talking about the autonomic nervous system. With the varicosity, remember, this is your neuron is extending through the tissue and it has these bulges along the way that are full of neurotransmitters. So we can be releasing, you know, neurotransmitter along several cells. This is a little bit more of a kind of open arrangement, if you will, versus that synaptic relationship that we talked about when we looked at an electrical synapse. So let's pick that up as well. All righty. Stay tuned for next video. And as always, take care of yourselves and each other.